there, I'm Stacy with Cheyenne Mountain Zoo's Adventure Department and we're here with another episode of Abnormally Normal Spring Break Camp Edition. It's a little abnormal in the world and a little bit in this treehouse because our chickens don't actually live in here, but this is a great spot for them to hang out while we teach you guys all about chickens and eggs. So with the world just being a little bit crazy, we're bringing you a little bit of normalcy and abnormalcy right now. And because you can't be here to celebrate camp with us doesn't mean we can't bring camp to you. So we're gonna talk to you guys today about chickens and eggs. And we're gonna start first with my friend Dawn and she's gonna talk to you all about chicken adaptations and her friend, Martha Stewart. Hi everyone, so just like Stacy said, this is our chicken friend, Martha Stewart, and you might have gotten a glimpse of Betty on our way over as well, but Martha Stewart and Betty are two of our resident chickens that live here in Big Backyard with us. Um, so like Stacy said, we're in the treehouse right now, which is not normally where they live, but if you come through Big Backyard and come back into the treehouse, you'd get to see a lot of other really cool animals that we would normally learn about during spring break camp. So today, we wanted to focus on some of these bird adaptations, which Betty wants to be involved and have some of these oats instead of Martha. So we'll give her a couple there, maybe sprinkle some, see what she thinks. So, adaptations of chickens. So birds have a lot of cool adaptations, but chickens are awesome ambassadors to teach us about some of those bigger bird species. So, birds as we know have feathers, right? That is one of the key adaptations that makes a bird a bird. So, the feathers that we see here in chickens, there you go, oh, not interested. Maybe we'll just set those there and see what she thinks. So the feathers that we see on chickens are three different types of feathers, actually. So right on top here, we are noticing on their wings, they have their flight feathers. So those are those long feathers that are gonna help them when they fly, and most birds have these. And then kind of what gives our chickens their shape are actually these feathers called contour feathers. So you can see that Betty has a few more contour feathers than Martha over here. So she has a fuller, rounder shape. But actually, underneath, you can see a little bit here on the back end of Betty, those really kind of soft looking feathers, those are called down feathers. So you might be familiar with these. We also use them in our coats and in our down blankets and things they help keep us warm and that's the exact reason why um, chickens and birds have them as well they help keep them warm in these colder months so feathers are really cool adaptation another one I want to point out here is you have probably noticed that both Martha and Betty have these really cool looking head pieces that they're rocking on top of their heads right and that is called a comb so Martha has a really nice looking one here but instead of just looking fancy right it actually serves a really cool purpose this comb is um, has blood vessels running all through it and so in order to cool down they don't sweat chickens don't sweat like we do so in order to cool down all of the blood goes up into their comb and it escapes kind of out into the air and it helps them kind of cool their body temperatures down so maybe like your dog when your dog's at home and they're panting or your cat that's kind of what chickens are doing they just don't stick their tongues out and pant so one other really cool adaptation that I want to point out, and I'm going to go ahead and put Martha down here. She wants to join Betty. But birds are super interesting because also they have this beak, right? And we all probably are aware that inside these beaks, they don't have teeth. So how in the heck do chickens chew their food when they're eating worms or these oats or any of that stuff? So inside birds' throats, they actually have what is called a crop. And it's really interesting. So in that crop, sometimes our chickens will actually swallow rocks. And what helps them with that is the rocks go into their crop and they help break down all of that food in there. So then the nutrients can go into their bellies and they can grow up to be strong and healthy. These chickens, Martha and Betty, again, they're part of our group. And our chickens are going on four years old. So next time you guys get to visit Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, come up and see our chickens, feed them some oats. They would love to see you. But now that we've learned so much about chickens, I'm pretty interested to learn about eggs. So let's see what Stacy has to teach us about chicken eggs. 
All right, so we're gonna start our experiment and we're gonna prep it first and then I'm gonna talk to you about eggs. So the only things you need from your for your experiment today are just regular vinegar, can be apple cider, white vinegar, whichever you have in your house, an egg, just a regular egg. I got mine from my fridge, got it from the grocery store, not from these guys. These guys don't lay eggs all that often, but I was able to get one from the store, so I have an egg. And then a jar that you can put either saran wrap, a lid. I brought a jar that has a lid on it, so I have these things that go together. But you can use a cup, a bowl, whatever you'd like, just something big enough that the egg will fit in with the vinegar on top. So, we're gonna get ready to do this in just a second. And I'm gonna hide the egg because chickens actually really like eggs. It sounds a little bit weird, but it's one of their favorite foods and it helps them have stronger eggs. So we're actually gonna put this away and hide it for just a second until we're ready to do our experiment. So to, to um, start off first, we're gonna talk about eggs. And people think there's only three parts to an egg. There's the shell, there's the white part, and there's the yolk, right? Actually, there's lots of parts to an egg and we're gonna learn seven different parts today. So in order to do that, I brought these fancy egg cutouts. So this is the first part of the egg and this is one that everyone knows. This is that hard outside layer. You guys know what that's called? The shell, you're right. So this is our shell layer, right? So this outside piece is our sh shell. The next part may not be one that you're familiar with. And let me see, it's getting stuck here and obviously Betty wants to help us. This goes inside, just inside the shell and it's not the, uh, the white, it's something different. So there's a thin layer that goes just inside the shell and that's called the membrane. And the membrane's really cool because it allows air to pass through, but it keeps bacteria from going inside the egg. So it keeps the inside of the egg nice and healthy. So that's that membrane. On the bottom of the membrane here, you can see there's a big opening spot. That's called an air sac. And that's always at the biggest part of the egg. So if you've ever hard boiled an egg and peeled it, there's a spot at the bottom where there's an air space, that's the air sac. That just forms while the um, egg is forming and the egg will const um, constrict, and constrict and expand. Those are hard words to say. Um, and as that's happening, an air sac will form. So that's why that exists there and it's always at the bottom. The next part is gonna be one that you know for sure. So it looks a little bit funny here. When you crack open an egg, it's clear. And that's called the egg white. The fancy word for the egg white is actually albumin. So that's a fancy word for that egg white part. And that just has some vitamins and minerals and all of that fun stuff in it. And that's the part that, part that we see when we cook an egg that turns white in the pan. So that's the albumin that you guys can see. And then these things right here, this is gonna be a new word. So these little things on the top and the bottom, they're called calaza. So let's see if I get my arrow right here. So the calaza is like a seat belt for the yolk. So the yolk wants to stay in the center of the egg at all times. And the calaza really holds on tight to that yolk so it stays in that, in that center. We don't want the yolk to touch the sides or the top or the bottom. You want it to be in the center to be a nice healthy yolk. So that brings me to that yellow piece that everyone knows for sure, right? What's that? The yolk. The yolk has all of the protein, all of the vitamins, all the minerals. You can get vitamin A and vitamin D um, and riboflavin from the yolk, so it's really healthy. Um, some people prefer not to eat the yolk because it's also a little bit fatty. So if you're eating eggs all the time, it's okay if you skip the yolk every once in a while. But if you do eat it, you're getting some good vitamins and minerals there too. The last piece we're gonna add to our chicken egg here is something that's gonna go right here. And it's in all of our eggs and it's something called, it's a little, little red thing, let me get my words together here. It's something called the blastoderm. I know that's a really fun word, sounds like the astronaut part of the egg, but the blastoderm is actually the spot where if this were a fertilized egg, which most chicken eggs are not, ours at the zoo are not, the ones you get in the grocery store are not, um, if it was a fertilized egg, that could turn into a chick at some point, but there's some ingredients needed there in order that to, for be, to be a fertilized chicken egg, but the ones you get in the store, the ones we have here at the zoo, are not, so that blastoderm just exists in there. All right, so those are our parts of the egg. We're gonna now do our egg experiment, which I think is super cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a rubber egg. So what we need, again, is our jar, our vinegar, 
and our egg, and I've got my lid ready to go here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chicken egg here, we're gonna gently put it in our jar, and then we're gonna take our vinegar and dump enough vinegar in to completely cover the egg. So you want the whole shell to be covered. You're gonna take your lid or your saran wrap or whatever you have, it can be a Tupperware, whatever you have going around the house that can have a lid on it, you're gonna cover it overnight. And it's actually gonna take two to three days for this to happen, but magic will happen because the vinegar is gonna dissolve that outer shell of the egg. And what we're gonna have left and luckily I did this, is just the membrane. You guys remember that word, membrane? So this will go in the fridge overnight, let it sit for 24 hours. On day two, you're gonna dump that vinegar out and add more vinegar, put it back in the fridge. You're gonna see bubbles on the outside of the egg. The water's gonna get kind of frothy and milky colored. Um, and then after three days, it's gonna look like this egg here. And we're gonna take it out here because I touched it earlier and it's gross and fun. Um, so we're gonna open this one. And this one is vinegary, so it's, if you were here, you could smell it. It's gonna be real stinky. Um, oh gosh, let's see if I can get it out here. I brought a bowl too, just in case. Okay, oh my gosh, this is insane. Let's see, we keep Martha away. So I don't know if you can see this, but this used to be a regular chicken egg with the shell on it, and all that's left, apparently Betty really wants this right here. I thought it was Martha, but it's Betty. Um, so this is just the membrane, and the yolk, and the albumin, and the um, calaza, and the blastoderm, all of them are inside here. And I don't know about you guys, but I got really curious about this, and I really want to cut this egg open. So I brought a bowl and a knife, um, and the knife I brought, if you're doing this at home, make sure you have your parents helping you because obviously you don't want to use knives by yourself. But we're going to try to cut this egg open again. Um, I'm going to try to get the chickens oriented here, and then we're going to see if you guys can see inside this. So I'm afraid it's going to pop. If you guys have ever had um, like Gushers fruit snacks, I'm terrified this egg is going to pop. But I've been told they're pretty strong, but I'm afraid to bounce them or anything. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put it right in this bowl here, and then Again, if I had my, my parents with me, I'd make sure that I had them watching and monitoring. But we're gonna cut it open and I don't know what's gonna happen. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> it for sure popped. So you guys can see it's a little bit gross, but here's that membrane, ew, that's disgusting. And then all of this is the albumin and then the yolk is in here. We're not gonna be able to see that calaza because I'm pretty sure the vinegar dissolved it. But that is our rubber egg. So you guys get to do this over the weekend here and then hopefully over the weekend, you'll have a nice rubber egg that you can play with. It's gonna smell really bad. I don't recommend eating it. I think that would be disgusting, but it'll be a really fun thing to play with.